Hello everyone, Jim Staley here, Passion for Truth Ministries, and welcome to today's broadcast. Uh, today we are going to be diving into the Israel conflict over in the Middle East. Matter of fact, it's not even a conflict, it is a flat out war. And it could escalate into a world war in the Middle East. There are so many players that are on pins and needles. As a matter of fact, I would uh, sculpt it as a tinderbox right now, waiting for for an ignition to light a massive bonfire uh, in the Middle East that could kill thousands, if not tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people if it spires out of control. So we're going to talk about what is the latest in the news today, what's going on in the Gaza Strip, when is the invasion, the ground invasion going to happen, is Hezbollah going to get in the game, what about Iran, are they behind everything? And we're also going to talk about a little bit about perception from Christians, a Christian worldview, what is the perception of what's going on in Israel and all of the above? We will likely not get to everything in this broadcast, but before we begin, I want to introduce you to not only a very good friend of mine, uh, but my son-in-law. He is originally a Russian-Ukrainian Jew and uh, married my firstborn, Hannah, and I'm grateful to have him here on the broadcast. Welcome, Daniel. Good to be here. Good to be here. So much to talk about. There's so much to talk about. Yeah, we are. We may not only see this conflict state in the Middle East. That's the scary part. It could actually turn into World War, World War Three. Hopefully not. But like you said, there's a lot of fuses around right now. So one of the things that uh, one of the reasons why I had Daniel come in not only is extremely articulate in some of these matters. Um, he's a graduate from Harvard Extension, and uh, and so he's got that Ivy School background. He's familiar and. and Many of the Ivy schools have been in the news uh, lately, as you know, Daniel. Uh, not in a good way. Uh, not in a good way, a good as way. they are coming out a against Israel in support of Hamas, a terrorism on the Jewish people, and uh, we're going to probably talk about some of that as well. So um, let's do this. Daniel, let's go to the, our first graphic to show people really what the Arab nations look like in comparison to Israel so that they can see exactly the scope of the danger that Israel's in and and how the entire world seems to be stacked against Israel. All the odds are stacked against Israel, yet it stands alone. So you can see on your screen all of the countries in green, right, Daniel? Yeah, so this one actually will show you Muslim-majority countries, so they're not necessarily Arab, like uh, we'll probably get into Iran as Persian um, there's there's a big divide on you know their actual nationalities and 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 bloodlines, but when when you're talking about Muslim majority countries, this is what we're looking at. And then you see that little red speck, and I don't blame you if you actually don't see it there. It's uh the Jewish majority countries in the world, which is country only one, and it's that little small speck. I'll put a little box around it so you can kind of focus on it in the region. Very tiny. That's what we're discussing today. All right. So, you know, it is absolutely amazing the majority, millions and millions and hundreds of millions of Muslims that there are in that area. And yet Israel is this tiny little speck. As a matter of fact, to put it in perspective of the United States, let's show them the graphic where if you put Israel on top of the United States, this is what it would look like. It's smaller than one of the Great Lakes than Lake Michigan. Yeah, you could fit it squarely into there and you won't even notice. Probably two of them you could fit into Lake Michigan. Yeah. Yet the entire two. world. And can I even go further, my friends, and say all of world history revolves around a sliver the so half the size of Lake Michigan in the Middle East. Very true. And not only just this little sliver, we're talking about a very small population of people as well. We've Hopefully, we're not going to divulge too much into the crazy talk and whether or not these guys are even Jews. We'll touch a little bit on it, but look at the statistics here. There are 2.4 billion Christians in the world, 1.8 billion Muslims, and that I try to make a graph, but you you can hardly see a sliver there. That's the Jewish population worldwide, 16 million. Uh, and in Israel, there's probably around, I don't know, what, 9 million now? Yeah. Yeah, I think very there's, tiny. I think there's nine million, and so when we're looking at, let me just just back up to to give you kind of an overscope uh, of this war of this war. Israel did not preemptively attack Gaza. There was nothing that Israel did to deserve their children being beheaded, and so there is a false narrative that's out there right now that says, "Oh, Israel d deserves this because 
you know, they're being judged by God or they've been uh, holding the, the Palestinian people hostage for so many decades in an open air prison. Let me ask you a question. If you're out there and you remotely have heard this false narrative, honestly, I'm going to call it what it is, this evil satanic uh, narrative that the Jewish people deserve this. Can you think, Daniel, actually, you brought this uh, to me last week, and I love this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this to our audience. Can you think of a single thing that your enemy, the worst enemy that you can think of, that they would do, that you would be okay with taking their children and beheading them and raping their wives and gutting them open and so on and so forth, the horrible things, burning, putting them in handcuffs and burning them alive, watching your children burn alive right in front of you. Can you think of anything that your enemies could do that would make you want to do that to their children? So we cannot come to a place where we say Israel deserves this or because even if Israel was a horrible nation, nobody, no matter what they do, even the Muslim people do not deserve their children to be beheaded and their little girls raped. No, on any on any level. Yeah, just think about this. This isn't human. This can't be human. Just the amount of hatred. You have to invent sin to 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 get close to what we're talking about here, and if you haven't seen the footages, the, the 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 images, and and really what we're talking about here, you have to see it. You have to see it because you'll see what evil looks like. What you're reading about in the Bible, the the real depth of evil can't be comprehended unless you actually look at it in the face and see what you're talking about here. Even Jews coming out of concentration camps, where their entire families were slaughtered, where they've been tortured, where they've been beaten, would, wouldn't have that sort of uh, amount of hatred to, to say, okay, now I'm going to behead uh, Nazi babies and say that they deserve that. Right. This is a new level of evil, new level of, of, of corruption and, and use of demonic power that we have not seen, uh, at least in modern modern times yeah uh, and and again it's worse than even what the nazis were doing because you see the nazis response to what they were doing they're trying to hide it up they were ashamed of it they were so many of them were even shocked by it but these people are proud of it this yeah. is what they were intending to do from the beginning they write it out they've been saying it for years look they, they've been teaching this in their schools so for those of you that believe that like the palestinian people are just innocent and all of this, and they're innocent bystanders. And look, well, let me say this. There are Palestinians living in the Gaza Strip that don't like Hamas, that they are okay with Israel being a state, but it's extraordinarily small minority. These people are teaching their teachers to teach their children to hate and to kill every Israeli boy and girl, and they even have chance of run over Israel. And you'll see it all over the internet. They're proud of it. This is inside of Hamas's a policies, their viewpoints, and their their constitution is to, they don't want a two-state solution. They did, they know, look, if they wanted a two-state solution, they would not be doing what they're doing. They already have a two-state solution, actually. And it is Gaza. <laughs> it is Gaza. Like, Gaza hasn't been controlled by Israel since 2006. Six. And 2007, they, they, they won the election. They've been controlled by Hamas ever since. And we're going to get into the water control and electricity control in a little bit. But that is the two-state solution. And what, what are you going to do above that? What are you going to give them weapons? What are you going to give them uh, free range to, to go wherever they want to? The result is exactly what we see happen. Yeah. It's, it's unthinkable. It's, it's not a real solution. It's not a solution. Yeah, let, let's talk about that for just a second. Because there, there's a lot of people that have bought this false narrative about the two-state solution. I have many friends in Israel. You guys know that. I've been to Israel, done done uh, several tours in Israel, and have people that are very high up, even uh, former Knesset members. And I can tell you, and I've talked to Palestinians on the ground that, that work in Israel. They don't want a two-state solution because they know the Palestinians have no capable government whatsoever. And they know that if there was a two-state solution that actually came into fruition because there's some uh, pie in the sky, you know, government in Washington idea in Britain that we, this is what we need to do. It would crush 
the Palestinian people because all it would do is expand what Gaza is today. It would expand it into a larger territory of nothing but terrorism. So let me just paint a quick picture here, Daniels, for our, for our audience. So so Hamas, so you have the Palestinian people, right, that, are, that they elected Hamas, by the way. Um, they elected them. They elected a terrorist organization. And they have no other opportunity. So if you give them and make them their own state and, and Israel says, hey, you're on your own, which is what they've done since 2006, what did they do? The first thing they did, elect Hamas. And what did Hamas do? We're not having any more elections, okay? We are going to be in control. And what did they do? They destroyed the economy of Gaza, which Israel had set up with billions and billions of dollars, full farms that were exporting 25% of some of the exports that came out of Israel came from the Gaza. Those 10,000 Israelis that were forced out of the Gaza in order to give Gaza uh, to the Palestinian people, all right, and to give them a shot, okay, which was a real two-state solution. A lot of people don't see that, but it is. You know what they did? They destroyed the farms. They killed the exports. They took all the money, and they put it into weapons, weaponry, doing underground Gaza with, with tunnels and building up their army so that they could eventually annihilate the Jews. This is, and so what happened? Uh, 73, they put up the Gaza Strip border, the West Bank uh, border, because they've got to protect themselves. So talk about the water. Let's just, let, that's just a quick overview. So when, look, at the end of the day, if, if you had a neighbor in your subdivision that came in and beheaded one of your children, and then threaten to annihilate the rest of your family, it would, and you were in control of the subdivision, would you not shut off their water supply? Would you not call in the police? And would you not want to destroy everything, uh, every single person that said that they were going to kill your children? What would you do? This is not a situation where, where Israel should stand back and just let Hamas come in. Look, Hamas is the one that is firing rockets into civilian areas. Do you see them putting leaflets? Over the, over the cities or villages of the Israelis and say, hey, by the way, all the civilians you need to leave, we're going to be attacking. No, they want to kill civilians. What is Israelis doing? Sending millions of uh, pamphlets, dropping them over Gaza City, giving them a week's time period. Folks, if we lived a thousand years ago, do you think Rome would give a week's time period and say, by the way, I just want to give you guys uh, some time to get out so we can come on. Yeah, or just even World War II. Like, what kind of tactic would that be? Oh, yeah, we're attacking the Nazis. You know what? Here's some free electricity and free water while we're doing that. Uh, look, uh, the whole... The, it's, it's, it's complicated. I have to say something, though. Uh, I have a lot of Palestinian friends. That Actually, one of my teachers was Palestinian. Uh, and there's some good people out there. Some of the, some of the nicest people. A, a, an interesting um, sort of dichotomy exists there. And not all Palestinians are evil. And in fact, when I was a part of the Kufi organization in my college, I was one of the first uh, groups in, in the Kufi organization. To and what's Kufi stand for? Just so Christians uh, United for Israel. We'll yeah. get into that later. <laughs> a lot into that later, um, by the way. But uh, we were working with the Muslim Students Association of our college. They were actually handing out food while we were having a Holocaust speaker talk. So... They want peace, but interestingly enough, they don't want the two-state solution, right? Because it's not a solution. And it, and so let's just let's talk about the water. What's what issues there? Yeah. So there are billions, billions of dollars. Most people can't even comprehend how much money is being poured into Gaza, being poured into the West Bank, which is another region, by the way, uh, that they hate each other. They don't want it. There's a power fight. We're just just right there. Um, but this money, this life support that uh, Gaza has been surviving on, where is it going? It's not going to their schools and their buildings. Some of it might be, but th there's so much that's going to war, to, to ammunition. If you knew that your country was reliant on power of your greatest enemy as you see it, and electricity, why won't you save yourself from that? Why won't you build infrastructure instead of shooting rockets into Israel? They knew they were reliant on Israeli electricity and water. And, and they want they, to be reliant on And they on want it. to be. Why? Yeah. Why, are they, why do they want to they be They want to be reliant on Israel because it's the excuse that Israel is strangling us. Israel, anything goes wrong, they can blame it on Israel. They've had this for 
if 17 years they have been their own state with billions and billions and billions of dollars, they could have 100% built their own electrical grid, built their own water grid, get out from underneath Israel. They never chose to do it. They not only want that. to be able to push this up on, on yeah, Israel. Not only that, it's free. And this yeah. is a really big point. They get free electricity, free water. Yeah. So why not? Hey, you're freeloading off of your enemy that apparently wants to exterminate you, yet is giving you free water and electricity. Uh, no country worth, this, worth the, their salt would be supplying that to an enemy that they're fighting. But Israel is still considering that. In fact, they turned the water back on Yeah. Uh, in the southern part of it. It's through. unheard of. It's completely unheard of. And by the way, since we're talking about that, they're getting ready to do a ground invasion right now. And Iran has come out and said this. I, I've, got to, I've got to read this because for those of you that don't believe that Iran is behind this, uh, you're very naive to the understanding of how uh, the, the, the Middle Eastern conflict uh, works. Iran is Persia of the Bible. Okay, so you need to know that from the spiritual perspective and even, uh, from the, the geographical and political uh, spectrum, that's Persia. So on the spiritual level, remember when Daniel is praying and, and, and who gets held up? The, the Prince of Persia. The Gabriel, Gabriel gets ha- right, held up by the Prince of Persia. Okay, so I think it might be the only time in all of the Bible that we're talking about a demonic prince, and it gives its name as the Prince of Persia. It's the Prince of Iran. Okay, the number one enemy of the greatest, one of the, the greatest prophets in the history of, of Israel is the Prince of Persia. There's something about the Persia in the Bible that is affecting all of biblical history. Today, it's Iran. Iran does not want to come into this war. They're, they're too smart. So in, in a Persian mind, this is how the hierarchy works. You're Persian. You're not Arab. You're Persian. Don't ever call a, 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 someone from Iran uh, an Arab. Uh, they're Persian. And then you have Arab, right? Then you have Hezbollah, Hamas, the terrorist groups, and then the Palestinians are at the very bottom. So listen to this quote, my friends, because this is incredible. This is coming straight from Iran Foreign Minister Hussein Amir Abdalian. He says, leaders of the resistance, talking about Hezbollah and Iran, will not allow the Zionist regime, Israel, to take any action in Gaza. All options are open, and we cannot be indifferent to the war crimes committed against the people of Gaza. Guys, this is fascinating and incredibly ironic. Because he's coming across as basically saying, we are going to get into this war. If they do a ground invasion, we're going to get into this war. We're not going to let them do anything in Gaza. All these war crimes against the Palestinians, yet Iran will not allow a single refugee from Palestine, from Gaza, to come into Iran. Nor will Jordan, and nor will Egypt. Nobody wants They don't want the Palestinians. No Arab country wants to invite Palestinians. Why not? Why? Just think about it. But also, how convenient is that, Iran, for, for Iran to say that right after like a quarter of Gaza has been flattened to a parking lot? Oh, yeah, we're not going to allow anything. No, they would happily stand back and watch them being slaughtered. They're, they were a sacrifice. Iran knew what Israel would do if they were to invade Israel and try something as stupid as they did. Why would they do this? They were sacrificing them. And Hamas knew it as well. They were sacrificing their own people. What Hamas did not calculate is that doing this was the end to them as political, uh, 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 to their political positions, their political places of power. Because it never, it never did. Yeah. In previous conflicts, they were just out there in Qatar having fun, uh, enjoying the luxury of uh, those billions of dollars that are coming in. And now they're like, oh man, it's starting to, you know, involve us. Now they're coming after us. Yeah. Yeah, very convenient, Iran. Very yeah, convenient. it's it's fascinating because it, we, the whole world narrative from Al Jazeera and and all the liberal media, you know, is is oh poor Palestinians and poor and, and, and the reality is m- the majority of the civilian population in Gaza, okay, hates Israel and they were dancing in the streets when they found out that over a thousand people were killed. Uh, raped and stabbed and and mothers' fetuses ripped out of their bodies and burned and all these horrible things. They're dancing in the streets. And many of them created and were a part of the atrocities over the decades for sure. So they're being pushed into the southern border. Egypt doesn't even want to open the door at all. They don't want anybody because uh, Hamas 
and the Palestinian people are the, the Muslim Brotherhood, according to Egypt. And Muslim Brotherhood is illegal in Egypt. They don't want them to come in because they'll assimilate and it'll be all kinds of problems. From out of the mouth of the, of the king of Egypt, as well as Jordan, they say the Palestinian people are deceitful and they can't trust them. They, they're their own factions. Not all Arab people, just like not all Christians get along, right? There are a lot of different denominations and some no of kidding. them, some of them very much don't get along and, and don't like each other. It's the same way in the Muslim world. And it's very, very sad. I mean, the Bible talks about this, uh, where the, his sword will be against, uh, every brother, you know, they're going to be infighting, uh, among, uh, Arab, Persian, Muslim communities. It's prophesied in the Bible, but it's just so sad because they claim to be pro-Palestinian. Anybody who's pro-Palestinian, whether you're Iran or Egyptian or whoever it is, or you, you're at, you know, at a prestigious uh, college campus where it doesn't even involve you and you're just, you think you're so smart because you're supporting Palestinian people and suddenly you're blaming Israel. No, if you have any sense, if you have any sense at all, and you think you support Palestinian people, you would pray that Israel would absolutely obliterate Hamas yeah. off the face of this earth because yeah. that would be the best thing that has ever happened to the Palestinians. Yeah, without a doubt. And, and guys, you know, just from a historical biblical worldview, it's important for you to know where the word Palestine, what Palestine means. It literally comes from the word Philistine. Okay, so, th so this is the, and by the way, the Philistines just so happened to live in Bible times. In Gaza. In Gaza. That's where they came from. And so you have the Palestinian people, Philistines, living in the Gaza. If you are a Bible-believing Christian out there, if, you, if you're a Bible believer, period, and you believe in Jesus, you believe in Yeshua, the Messiah, then this next statement should really rock your world, to put it back into perspective. If you were 3,000 years ago, and you're during the time of, of King David, right, and, and, and the prophets, and we were talking about the Philistines that were throwing rocks and bombs uh, into Jerusalem and fighting uh, the Jewish people uh, at that time period, there would not be a single one of you that would feel sorry for the Philistine people if Israel came and routed them. As a matter of fact, there's many stories in the Bible where that's exactly happened. When Samson did what he did alone to the Philistines, uh, men, women, and children, you wouldn't see anybody on, on CNN going, oh, the poor Philistines. No, Israelis need to be protected against their enemies, and the main enemy, according to the Bible, is the Philistines. Uh, it's it, be careful just be careful and we can talk about this many times in many different ways but you have to be careful to not find yourself fighting god in this situation god does choose sides unlike us which we would be like oh you know maybe maybe not we don't really know the situation god knows the situation and even if god is judging israel you better hope that you don't speak up during god's judgment Many, many times in the Bible, those who spoke up while God was judging his people, you know what happened to them? They got judged and killed for it. Matter of fact, give them an example, Daniel. Put sure. you on the spot here. I mean, I mean, you could just talk about the prophet. Prophet, what's that guy's name? Um, Shimei. Shimei. Shimei, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, he was criticizing David, rightfully so, when David was being punished by God. And God himself says that this is going to be a punishment for me, where there's going to be infighting in your family. And he criticized David, and was he wrong? No. David's walking, he's driving, driving his horse. He's riding on his horse with his men, and this guy named Shammai is throwing rocks and cursing David, you know, as a murderer and bloodthirsty, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and one of David's men said, hey, should I take this guy's head off? Oh, he's talking against you, David. Dude, dude, are you... Are you deaf? You cannot hear what he's saying. What does David say? He says, no, let him, let him curse on. Maybe he's, maybe he's right. Maybe he's right. Maybe he's wrong. In other words, David himself would not even hurt the guy that is cursing him because he was afraid that if he did, his hand might be against the Almighty God. What, what are we learning from there? And there's Babylonians. Babylonians again. God says, these are my servants. What? He calls the enemies of, of God's people his servant, and brings them down, takes them to captivity, and then punishes them for actually doing that. You know, like, we're setting ourselves up. How many divisions do we have? How, how, the divorce rate. Where's our youth? Yeah. And here we are talking against Israel. 
Oh, maybe they're not really Israel. Oh, maybe, you know, the worst place to be is when you're technically right and you're dead wrong. Yeah. David's own people turned against him in times when God punished him and they were fighting the living God. Yeah. They got destroyed. Never touch God's anointed. So so look, let me just put this in in a little small package because... I'm about to get fired up about this next topic, okay, of people that are saying, hey, maybe this is just the judgment of God and because, you know, they're not following God the way they should and they, you know, they, they killed the Messiah and, and, and maybe they're not even the real Jews. Look, even if any of that is true, you are walking on such dangerous ground by, because what you're doing without knowing it, and, and I'll give it to you, some of you don't realize this, you are siding with Satan. Because say, it's the only thing that can, can behead children and to gut pregnant women is pure evil. God doesn't do that. So if you were to say, oh, this is God's judgment against the children of Israel, you are walking a very, very fine line. Because even if it is God's judgment, which I don't believe it is at all, but if it is God's judgment, you better stand back and just pray and keep your mouth shut. Because Matthew 7 says, whatever level that you judge, you'll be judged. You would not want to be found at all in this life or in the afterlife judging from a God perspective to be that arrogant to actually be able to have that come out of your mouth that I think this is the judgment of God when you don't know all of the history, you don't know anything what's going on over there, you don't know behind the scenes, you don't have the mind of God, and God certainly didn't have a prophet come out and say, this is the judgment of God. So we stand back and we we pray for the people of Israel. We pray for even some of the innocent people that are in Palestine that are, are being killed and taken advantage of by, by the terrorists. But the very last thing that you do is that you subject your own mind, will, and emotions and your tongue to displaying a judgment that you can't possibly be able to prove or know. And what's the, what's the end result? Like, why? Why would you say this? Imagine if your child... Uh, went to a party on, on, on Shabbat and you're, and, and maybe it wasn't the best decision to do it on Shabbat, but they got captured by terrorists and they find out that either their believers or their parents are believers or somehow they're connected to the people of the book, which they hate. And they kill them simply for that reason, just because their, their, their parents are, are believers or whatever it is. That's why they kill them. And how, how, unhelpful would it be if someone comes up and says oh well you know it's because they were breaking shabbat well aren't you a precious cupcake like what are you doing yeah you you're just you're you're actually doing the the role of devil the yeah, accuser well, of the oh, brother yeah. i mean can you imagine like how you would feel if you're a believer in christ and someone said oh they're god's just judging them that's why their kids just got beheaded because they're not following Christ the right way. They're, they're not doing this good enough or not doing that, be, you know, they should do that better. Can you imagine the feeling? And let me go one step further. As a believer in Messiah, our job is to be a light to the world. Okay, that was one of the, one of the biggest things that Yeshua did was say, be a light to the world. What is a light? A light is a place that people want to come to because they are in darkness. And if you, if you want to be a light, to the Jewish people, whoever you think they may be, they are human beings and they need the light as well as we need the light. How good of a light? How do you think that they're going to respond to you? Do you think you'd be able to go up and tell them about Jesus after you just said uh, and projected judgment on them that maybe they're they're being judged by God? May it never be. Mega Nointai, may it never be. It is forbidden uh, in, in the mind, the heart of God, in all of scriptures. Enough on that topic, but please do not judge this situation. Pray for this situation. Look into the Torah. Look into the prophets for prophecy. That's fine. But do not take the role of God or you will find yourself in God's hot seat. Because here's, a, here's one final sobering thought on this subject. What if you're wrong? What if the 1% chance that you're wrong and this is not a judgment at all? You would have caused yourself to sit in the seat of the accuser and that is Satan himself. I, I just have to say one thing. All right, if you really think, and especially for those who are who believe are they're, are they're doing the right thing because this is somehow supporting the Palestinian people, I would love to have you show your support to the Palestinian people in person and see how they respond. I want you to go to go to Gaza 
and see how much they'll thank you, how, how they'll thank you for, for your support. They'll, they'll lynch you on the spot and kill you, and they will kill just the same way that they've been killing believers all over the Middle East. Israel's the only place in the Middle East where the population of Christians are going up. So I don't want to hear about, oh, you know, some guy was called names in, in, in Israel. Oh, you know, is it? come on. You're comparing to a region where they would behead a Christian, torture their family, and in the most brutal way, they would treat you if they had the chance. So there's the moral equiv- equivalency is, is actually just mind-boggling yeah and it's a direct result of you know what the billions of dollars that were that countries are sending gaza that's another major source of where they're actually sending their money is not or 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 a direction of where they're sending sending their money is actually toward propaganda yeah. this is how they take a very clear cut of issue like oh look there are people that are torturing killing raping uh all and 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 doing it in the most vicious evil way and then there are those who are uh, Israel that are protecting the Holy Land that are the reason why we can go to Israel and not die, that visit Israel and and be safe. And they're trying to avoid civilian casualties. And we're like, eh, you know, it's not really clear. Too much information. That's a result of exactly evil Hamas propaganda reaching the minds of people. You know, speaking of propaganda, and I think it's really important, like part of this broadcast is to is to give you the truth and to expose the false narrative and the propaganda that's out there that even believers in Christ across the globe uh, and average people are starting to believe because they're hearing it all over this open air prison. It's not an open air prison, ladies and gentlemen. They put a fence down uh, the, the edge because the people are sending terrorists uh, across the border into Israel to kill the Jews. Uh, they're controlling the water because if they don't control the water, one, the Palestinian, Palestinian people would never get what they need because Hamas doesn't care about the Palestinian people. And two, they have to have a leverage over their enemy who has sworn in their own government documentation to wipe them off the face of the earth. All right. Number two, it's uh, in- actually, let's let's before we go sure, to go number ahead. two, we have to talk about the water rights. Uh, you talk about leverage. There's a really good reason. This is not like collective punishment where they're just trying to punish everybody at once by taking away the water. Their water, uh, they actually have desalination plants. I don't know if most, mo- I didn't even know this until recently. They have three different desalination plants built by other countries in order to help them. Uh, they shut those down. They can start those back up with electricity. <laughs> But you know what they need to use? Fuel. Yeah. Israel is sending a very clear message. Use up your fuel, which is important for any military to function. Uh, Instead of using the fuel to kill Israelis, which is what they're planning to do, they say use it for water. Hey, you got your own fuel. Use up your fuel to take care of your own people. Yeah. They're putting them in a position where they have to use the fuel. And yet, even in this position where you have to use the fuel, Hamas refused to do not it. To. Yeah, they refused to do it. And not only that, uh, humanitarian groups sent in an enormous amount of gasoline and fuel uh, into the into the southern region from Egypt into Gaza, and Hamas stole it. They stole all the fuel so that the people could not use it to turn on the, the desalination plants to have fresh water. If you can imagine that. All of the humanitarian supplies that's coming in uh, to Gaza, Hamas is stealing it. They don't care about their own people. As a matter of fact, just so you know the truth, Israel dropped pamphlets telling the the people to get out of Gaza. Hamas started disseminating throughout the people of Gaza, the Palestinian people, that this is false. They're not going to do a ground invasion. You need to stay here. Don't leave. Why? They want tens of thousands of Palestinians to die. Now, you might say, Jim, that's crazy. It is absolutely the truth. They don't care about the Palestinians. They're using the pal. If they cared about the Palestinians, why on earth would they put their military bases and where they put uh, launch rockets from children's schools or hospitals so that the Israelis, if they do decide to strike back, would be killing people in schools? And to go further on that, just to show you how incredible the, the propaganda is, Hamas fired rockets into Israel, there were duds, they didn't cross the fence, and they landed and blew up one of their own hospitals where hundreds of people were killed. 
And the first thing that they said was Israel bombed a hospital. Now, Within 15 minutes, by the way. And they stated incredible. the amount of casual, casualties they had, 500. How can you count the amount of casualties you Within had 15 minutes. minutes after something happened? Yeah, and everyone's dead. And then they reduced it and said, oh, well, maybe it's only 200. As a matter of fact, let's let the truth be told. Let's let them listen to the audio clip right now. So Israel was forced to do something that I know that they didn't want to do. They did not want to divulge that they had the technical capability of, of zeroing in on individual cell phone calls between Hamas members, but they were forced to, because of this false narrative that was quickly circling the globe, globe to release the conversation, the audio conversation of two Hamas members talking to each other, where they admit, one of them says, what on earth happened? And the other one says, uh, we had a dud and it blew up one of our hospitals. And the other Hamas guy said, you got to be kidding me. Of all things that it would blow up, it blew up one of our hospitals. And then they went on to blame the Israelis when this conversation admits it was their own missiles launched from the hospital that went off and blew up the hospital. And then they blow it. Uh, they blame it on Israel. They don't care about their own people. They lie, they cheat, and they steal. And this is all about an angle that, that Iran has to use Hamas to get Israel to preemptively attack. They knew, Iran knew they were going to go into Gaza, wipe them out, which would force Hezbollah and the world would be go against Israel, create this giant anti-Israel campaign that would allow Hezbollah and Iran uh, to be able to come in through their proxy Hezbollah uh, through Lebanon and attack Israel from the north to escalate the war. The Iranians, Iranians did not uh, anticipate that the Americans would have such a fast and unequivocal support with huge warships coming in. Actually, not since World War II have we had this kind of presence in the Middle East with aircraft carriers and hundreds of jets. Uh, it, it's extraordinary. That's the only reason why Iran has not jumped in this already is that the threat of the United States getting involved here would wipe them off the face of the earth. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Yeah, you have to ask also, like, uh, probably something that many people are wondering right now, like, who do you, who can you believe? Who can you believe when, when, when something like this happens? Obviously, Hamas has his own perspective. Israel has his own perspective. You hear a news having their own perspective. Well, the thing is, this is one of the best documented areas right now on the planet. There are cameras everywhere. And that rocket that got shot uh, and misfired, actually it, it exploded right above, and then all that fuel went down on the on the hospital with the uh, warhead, uh, that got caught by a Al Jazeera out of all news agencies, a anti-Israel uh, news agency. Amazing. Like, out of, how, what are the chances? They are the ones that posted it. They caught it on camera. So... Who do you want to believe? Believe the other side if you want to. The the results are the same. Same thing with all these atrocities when you heard about what happened. Do you know who was posting that? That didn't come from Israel. Hamas was bragging about it. Hamas was posting about it. It, it's, it just boggles my mind when you see college students saying, oh, I don't really believe it because it's misinformation. Okay, do you believe Hamas? Then listen to Hamas. They're saying it themselves. Right. The, the illogicness. Uh, 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 is that a word? I'm no. not even sure if it is a word. I didn't go to Harvard. But... <laughs> Uh, the illogical position to say, oh, the, uh, Israel's just lying. I don't believe that they're beheading children. While Hamas themselves are posting pictures and bragging about what they've done. Uh, so if you don't believe Israel, uh, like you just eloquently said, believe the terrorist. So as we begin to kind of, kind of wrap up this program, you know, for today, there's so many things that we could get into. But, but, but I, w I want to mention the spiritual aspect. There's a lot of people that are emailing me, asking me, 
is this the the Gog and Magog war? Is this the Ezekiel war of all wars? Like, where does this fit in prophecy? So I have not given my position on that yet, but I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to give you the quick thumbnail of what I believe and how this fits into end times prophecy. According to the prophets and the prophecy specifically about Israel in the end days, all of the nations have to be against Israel, all of them. You cannot have a single nation that is in support of Israel in the Ezekiel War, in the, in the Gog and Magog War, all of these end times prophetic wars, Israel is by themselves. Right now, you've got massive support, world support for Israel. And, and right now in the Middle East, you have aircraft carriers uh, from, the, from the United States. So this can't be the Ezekiel War. It's not the Gog and Magog War. But here's what I do believe. We are seeing, and this started really, I believe, in COVID uh, with, with, with the setup of the political set up of seeing how they can funnel people, uh, the sheep, into where they want them to go uh, for, the, for the 666 uh, uh, belly of the mark of the beast, I should say. But then now the geopolitical national level of Israel is, is being tested where e the, the new axis of evil powers uh, are coming into play. Russia is there. They don't like Israel. Iran hates Israel. All right, China and North Korea are staying out of this for a moment, but they've not condemned Hamas at all. And you're beginning to see alliances form. Now, what I believe the end result of where this is going to be is either one of two things. Either this does not escalate and Israel goes into Gaza, they flatten it, take it over, and forever will then uh, uh, govern uh, the Gaza uh, like they did pre-2006, except for a whole new level, right? Or this escalates. If it escalates and, and Hezbollah gets into the war, you need to understand something. Hezbollah is 10 times the size uh, and 10 times the army of Hamas with 10,000 missiles already pointed at Israel. If they hit the nuke button and 10,000 missiles come towards Israel, it will swamp and overwhelm the Iron Dome system and you're talking tens of thousands of Israelis will die. Yeah, 150,000, maybe close to 200,000 rockets right now in Hezbollah. And these are precision guided. Yes, I said 10,000. I meant 100,000. It's it's so it's more than I think any other NATO country except United States in terms of number of rockets and who has them. Yeah. Like that's not a that's not a terrorist, you know, group there. That's an army, that's a military. Yeah. So what Israel's doing if you want to know kind of why the pause is there, uh, the suspicion is, one, they needed to wait till President Biden uh, left uh, Israel. And there is a worry that Hezbollah and Iran will get into this if they go into the Gaza Strip. Because uh, I, Iran just said that, uh, as I just read a few minutes earlier, that they said, we're not going to allow this. They will get into the war. If they do that, it will come from the north, and this will escalate this into a position that's going to force Israel to do something drastic. And because Israel has no place to go, they are going to have to hit a button. And I'm not going to say that it's going to be the nuclear button, but I'll use the word nuclear in a metaphorical uh, way. They're going to have to wipe other places and enemies off the face of the earth to protect themselves, because if they don't preeminently strike and Iran or uh, Hezbollah hits their uh, nuke button, if you will, and sends 150,000 missiles at one time to Israel, Israel won't survive that. So the only way they can survive is with a preemptive strike. Now think about the political fallout of a preemptive strike that kills 150,000 people in Iran. The whole world would have to uh, immediately, uh, if you think they're against Israel now, uh, you wait till 150,000 people die and no one knows that Israel had intel that they were going to push the nuke button on Israel that day and Israel beat them to it. Yeah. Every nation will then begin to pull away from Israel. So I believe that there is a potential setup for the Ezekiel War, a potential setup for all nations to withdraw from Israel. But as it stands right now, we're just not quite there. It's scary. And don't find yourself to be the one against Israel. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, Israel may be forced to do something that no other country should have to endure, but Southern Lebanon, actually, is what it would be. Perhaps even Syria. Syria yeah. is trying to get into the fight. <sighs> Damascus might be destroyed. Look, Think if, about that. if that happens, you just quoted Scripture. Exactly. Because the Bible says that the end days war 
is going to come from the north. And then Damascus is going to be a uh, uh, level, like uh, uh, literally on a level <laughs> that has not been seen since Hiroshima. Because the Bible describes Damascus as people's tongues melting in their mouth and it never be inhabited again. The only thing that can do that is a nuke. Like the only thing that can literally melt your tongue in your mouth is a nuclear weapon. And so it, it is possible as we begin to see the players, what's going on is, it, it, and again, just to end this, because we can never, we could, we could do this all night long. But uh, so you understand what's going on. Iran is ancient Persia. Iran, okay, Persia, goes all the way back to Esther. What did uh, Haman want to do? He wanted to kill all the Jews. This is Amalek, ladies and gentlemen. This is the spirit of Amalek that is trying to do what Haman couldn't, what Hitler couldn't. He doesn't understand the promise of God is without uh, any barriers. God promised Abraham the land of Israel, and no one ever can take that away. He will. The land of Israel will always be the land of Israel, and it will never stop ceasing being a nation, no matter what you do. If it, I told my uh, my son-in-law, I told Daniel before the broadcast, if Hitler could come out of his grave right now, the first thing he'd say is, guys, none of you will be able to do as good a job of killing the Jews as I did. It can't be done. Save your money. Go spend it on private jets and, and beach vacations because you're not going to be able to get rid of the Jewish people. They are surviving for the last 4,000 years. They will be here all the way to the time of the Messiah, and it's promised that, it will be, it, that they will be here even when every nation turns their back. So when the curtain falls, and if this thing falls apart completely, I can assure you that even if you don't even like the Jewish people, God is endorsing them because they are the people of the covenant, whether not, we're not talking about the Messianic covenant. They are the people of the Abrahamic covenant that God has promised the land to. And, and just to kind of put this in a nice little bow for a certain group of people out there that really is against Israel and they don't even believe uh, that the Jewish people are the yeah, Jewish are people. Jews? Yeah. Are they Jews? You know, I don't even think they're actually the real Jews. Let's get into the crazy. Oh talk. my gosh. In the last two minutes, let me just give you this monologue really quickly. The Bible says in prophecy that the Jewish people, the is Israel has to be a nation because you can't have the rest of the world be against a nation that doesn't exist. Right. So it says that, that the Northern armies and, and all the, the five nations that are coming against Israel, including Russia and Iran, they have to come against Israel. That means Israel has to be a nation right now. Israel is a nation. So if you are one of the, the people out there that have swallowed this extraordinary lie uh, that, that the Jewish people are not really the, the Jewish people of Israel. You have no basis of reality in prophecy, and the amount of stretching of prophecy that you'd have to get just to get Yeshua to Jesus to come back is extraordinary. You know why? Because you'd have to overthrow current state of Israel with all of the Jewish people, kick every single one of them out, and put a whole other people group in there to formulate a new state of Israel because the state of Israel has to exist in end times prophecy. And, and it what? exists guess right what? now. Guess who else wants that? Oh, Hamas. Oh, what a Isn't that something? Yeah. Satan himself wants the Jewish people killed. This is why that doctrine is so damningly dangerous and evil and satanic because, and it's deceitful because in order for those of you that have swallowed that lie or have heard it somewhere that the Jewish people aren't the Jewish people, okay, and they use all the statistics, the end result is you have to kill all of the Jewish people that are in Israel right now and replace them with a new people group so that the people of Israel can exist for prophecy to come true. That is genocide, my friend. That is Hitler mentality. Yeah, let me let me do my own monologue on that. Okay. Uh, it's coming from a real, uh, real position of ignorance. You know, no serious organization or entity actually believes that. Like, we're, we have to be the ones. We have to be the crazies to throw that out. And for good reason, I just have to say a few things. If they're not Jews, why the hate? Why the hate? Why the obsession? You know that Satan is at work these days, and he does have a target. Why are the Jewish people always persecuted to such an extreme uh, state? And, and then again, why the blessing? Do you know they're also the most blessed people on earth? Statistically, Great point. they're the most cursed. They're the most blessed people on earth. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Does anybody hear Genesis 13 right now? The Messianic movement is built on these people. 
So now you're like mostly everything you know is coming out of so many teachings of these Jewish people. And you're saying, oh, you know, there may not really be Jews. We don't even have Old Testament. I'm just without the people that are in Israel right now. you're, You're undermining your own foundation in so many ways you don't even realize it. They kept the Torah. Do you know that these, this weird group of people is responsible for the Torah and it's and the, and 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 the, how precise it is? And we saw that with the Dead Sea Scrolls. Atheists were skeptical of that. Not anymore. Denouncing God's miracle of Israel as well. It's a huge miracle that in a people group after two thousand years are able to return to speak an ancient language, revive. You're going to say that that's not a miracle? You're not gonna. You're gonna say it's not a miracle that they got attacked by five different Arab countries. Let me just show that graphic right there. Five different hundreds of millions of Muslims were standing against this happening. And in any other military situation, it should have been a slam dunk. And, it, and they not only won, they won massively. Yeah. And again and again against all odds. Against all odds, you're gonna say that's not a miracle. You're giving way too much credit to to the Jews. Again. Why are they so blessed? Twenty percent of all Nobel Peace Prizes, yeah, Jews. You know what Richard Dawkins has to had to say to that? He's like, I have no answer. It has to be something colossal. Little did did he know he's talking about God. Yeah, That's God is colossal. the colossal, and forty percent of the world's wealth is owned by the Jewish people. Like. They, they are running all of Hollywood. Now, we're not saying that, that that's good or bad. What we're saying is that they're extraordinarily blessed uh, in the financial realm. I don't think anybody uh, denies that. But they're also the most cursed people on earth from the from the, the evil's uh, perspective. And look, when we look at Satan himself, he's outside of time. You think he knows who the Jews are? If he knows that these aren't the real Jews... Why on earth would he be trying what to exterminate them? Why, why, why is he wasting his time trying to exterminate them? Oh, wait a minute. He's trying to exterminate them so he can get the real Jews in there so that the real war can come at the end of time and he can be thrown into the lake of fire. End of story. No need to talk about that any further. Please do not believe that. It's being disseminated across the internet and it needs to be shut down. It's demonic. If someone is teaching that, unsubscribe from their channel. Absolutely run from them so that you don't inherit uh, the diseases that they will bring upon themselves and the judgment that is at their door. We support anyone. I don't care what their creed or theology is. I will support anyone that believes in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and more importantly, believes in life. The reason why the Jewish people even have a state today, okay, and I'm, I'm going to do a whole teaching on the history of Israel on this, so I'll, I'll tease you for uh, the next teaching that I'm going to be releasing is the history of Israel, that when the British mandate Uh, ended in 1948, their mandate was for a Palestinian state and an Israel state. Why did the Palestinian state not start then? Because that's when it was supposed to start. You know why? Because they couldn't govern themselves. They never got together any leadership. They were even, even the land was already set apart for them and they couldn't do it. Do you know who did? Israel. They put together a government, they put together, they brought together the best of all their sectors from the business sector to the bulldozer sector, and they brought them together, created a government, and then the second that the, that the mandate ended, they declared themselves a state. And they've been governing themselves ever since. So don't believe in this nonsense that the Palestinians didn't have a chance or Israel's had them under the thumb. No, Israel and Palestine were even neck to neck on the race. 750,000 people got displaced of Palestinians in the land of Palestine. I get it. And that's a, a terrible thing. But that's what happens in war. And when you can't govern yourself, you know what happens? Someone will govern you. Unfortunately, the, what you see is a direct result of a people group that was focused on life and structure and surviving. They just came from the Holocaust. They just wanted to be left alone. You think Holocaust survivors wanted to go to war? Absolutely not. They wanted to live, many of them still with scars from the Holocaust. And, and yet you have this other people group that all their focus was was to destroy, kill, and I would say steal. Yeah. Because that land, any believer should know, does not belong to some Arab population. It actually does belong to Israel. The promise went through Isaac. In every possible form, it belongs to them. What, uh, whatever way you want to want to count it, because I mean, name a Palestinian king. Yeah, there wasn't one. Oh, what about Palestinian countries before, or or, or some sort of powers before uh, the 1948? 
There were, were no rulers. There were nothing. There was nothing there by God's grace yeah. in order to make it extremely obvious for us that, hey, this still belongs to Israel. And that's a promise from God saying that the land would be laid desolate and left desolate until God's people return. Is it desolate now? No. No, because it came to life in one single day. I believe it's Isaiah 66 that says that, that it was birthed in a day. It was a miracle. Prophecy came alive right before our very eyes. And that's how we know that the Jewish people are are, are the promise uh, of the covenant right now from the Abraham covenant. To wrap everything up, I want to just say, first of all, thank you for joining us in this broadcast. If you have not, listen, if you've not watched Identity Crisis, and you're new to this broadcast, first of all, please subscribe uh, and hit your notifications and turn them on so that you can get notified the moment that we put out another video, uh, the moment that I have another teaching. We normally have teachings every single Saturday. We've got a message for you at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, but you need to watch Identity Crisis. It shows you the history of Israel from, from a Genesis to Revelation and how God's people was separated into the Northern Kingdom, the Southern Kingdom, how Christians fit into today, why Jesus actually came, uh, why Yeshua died, rose from the dead, what's the mystery that Paul's talking about. It could not be more relevant today uh, than, than any other time than today. So I encourage you, if you haven't watched that, watch that. It will really open your mind to how you fit, how you fit. Everyone wants to talk about how Israel fits into prophecy. How do you fit into prophecy as being a part of Israel uh, grafted in? And so anyway, I'm Jim Staley with Passion for Truth Ministries. Daniel, thank you so much for joining me today on today's broadcast. Any final words? Well, I'm glad we can talk about it. I would love to not talk about it. It's, it's a sad thing that we have to go on to actually share this. But the good news is that most people have their heads screwed on straight. And they are supporting Israel. And they know the difference between good and evil. And they're not trying to parse out technicalities in a time where it's extremely destructive and lethal to do so. People yeah. are dying over these comments. So thank you for the, all those that are actually doing the right thing. And, and I, I know that from the Jewish perspective... There's no greater friend of Israel than believers. Amen. Amen. And lastly, pray, not just for the peace of Israel, uh, pray for victory and final victory, that Amalek will be destroyed and the head of the snake will be cut off. Lastly, there are people inside of what today they call the West Bank. It's Judea and Samaria of the Bible. And uh, they are very, very vulnerable as Palestinians are marching now in protest from village to village in the West Bank, in Judea and Samaria. Some of them uh, could turn violent. And because all the top soldiers are being pulled uh, to the, the borders, it's leaving the interior uh, of Judea and Samaria very vulnerable. We're trying to get a relief package and working together uh, with uh, some of our board members, working with uh, those that, that we are connected with in, in the United States Congress to put together a package Please pray that this package can be put together. Please pray uh, for the Israelis, for the innocent civilians and families on both sides, because we don't know the hearts of everybody. And I want to just say for the record, like we believe that there are hearts on both sides uh, that, that want peace. Uh, but there's a lot of radicals that unfortunately are taking control uh, of those that, that are innocent. So let's continually pray. And until a uh, next update or teaching, I'm Jim Staley with Passion for Truth Ministries. I pray that God blesses you and protects your family as this world begins to spiral, hopefully not out of control. Hopefully. But thank the Lord that God himself is in control. All right, we will see you in the next video.